Hello everyone and welcome to the Saturn V Capabilities Test in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 with the Making History DLC. In this video I want to test out the capabilities of the Making History version of the Saturn V. What we have here is the first two stages because we're doing the low carbon orbit capacity test which is the maximum payload to low carbon orbit. In the previous Saturn V video I established that obviously the, this version of the Saturn V is OP for delivering uh, the Apollo mission, Apollo-esque mission to Kerbin's moon, but that is largely because of how little delta V it takes to get to Kerbin's moon. In fact, uh, if you take a look at the delta V of the upper stage of this, which we have left off in order to do this capacity test low carbon orbit, this is more like Skylab. Uh, Skylab just had the first two stages, the first two stages of the Saturn V in order to deliver that payload to orbit because the third stage was effectively turned into the Skylab uh, space station. So here we are trying to carry 102 tons to low carbon orbit and what, what I found is that actually its low carbon orbit uh, capacity is less than that of the actual Saturn V, though it depends on how you calculate the actual Saturn V's capacity. Uh, but generally it's stated as 120 to 140 tons. Depends on how you calculate the, whether you calculate the third stage or not basically. And, uh, but the largest payload it ever delivered to low earth orbit uh, just to stay in low earth orbit without counting extra fuel and stuff like that was Skylab. And that was about 80 tons. And basically we're going to have to hold 40 degrees for a while because the upper stage is carrying a pretty heavy burden of 102 tons like I said. So staging, and there we go, and now we're going to switch to stability assist and keep holding at 40 degrees for a while. After this I want to test its capabilities to Joule and actually launch an Apollo-esque mission to Joule. And I think that will work out, but I've never tried it before. So we're going to be trying that out uh, on, a, on a first try basis and we'll see if it works. Probably with me I'll get it wrong, but you guys will be able to figure out how to get it right. I think what we want to do is land on Val, is what I'm aiming for. Um, Tylo is a little bit too heavy on the gravity, and Lathe atmosphere is complicated. And uh, yeah, so those are my thoughts as far as what we're aiming for in Joule. But for now, we're just trying to get uh, establish the low carbon orbit capacity of this. And you can see this one has to really stretch. Of course, we probably should have launched in a steeper trajectory with the first stage, but, but I believe that this will still make it just fine. Incidentally, on the real rockets, they shut off the center engine on both the first stage and the second stage for different reasons. Um, on the first stage, it was to limit g-forces. On the second stage, it was to prevent it from shaking itself to pieces. Uh, it had a bad oscillation issue, especially when going at a uh, higher um, higher acceleration, so they shut off one of the engines to make sure that did not happen. It's possible to get this to orbit without coasting. So, I mean, we've made it to orbit uh, 94 by 76 with 184 meters per second to spare with a 102 ton payload. So, it's possible that you could get more than this, I mean, highly possible, but not likely that you, you'll get more than 110 tons, which means that this version of the Saturn V is actually underpowered to low orbit uh, than the real thing, which is interesting to note. So if, if you uh, feel like there's no possible reason for the Saturn V or something like that, because of course it's really not, it's really OP for the whole moon landing bit, well, at least you can take comfort that its uh, orbital capacity to low carbon orbit is actually less than that of the real thing. But moving right along, let's try it out to Joule. Okay, so the Joule configuration of this, I'm basically going with the normal Apollo setup, except I've modified it somewhat. And uh, so I'll discuss that in a bit. Uh, this is the KE-1, so just in case you're confused about which one is the F1 engine, it's the KE-1 there. And again, it's the I-2 up here, so they call the F1 engine the Mastodon. And... Uh, the skiff is the J2, and then we have five J2s up here, one J2 here, and that will transfer us to Joule is the plan. Taking a look at our vacuum stats, we see that the launch stages combined for 4,224, and that's because 
the sea level uh, thrust weight ratio of it is not very high. It's higher than it is with its maximum payload. This is not its maximum payload now. And the delta V provided by the third stage is 3621 in vacuum. So you should have no trouble transferring to Joule or to anywhere really. And it can probably make orbit around wherever you're going to. Uh, here we have now I've nerfed the AJ-10 engine, the J-10, AJ-10, um, uh, to make it more in line with any sort of balance with the rest of the parts. So again, my nerf uh, brings it down to 260 vacuum and uses mod propellant. Uh, so uh, whatever I do with this, you'll be able to do better if you're using the stock version of this. And this is just more of a challenge for me. Uh, on the lander, though, I've changed it. The, all this other stuff was the same as my Apollo Center 5 video. But I've changed the lander so that it only uses one spark engine. So it's only a single stage now. It's not a dual stage with an ascent and descent stage. And that's practical because we don't want to leave stuff behind on Val anyway. Uh, it's tough to tell exactly how much Delta V we have with the lander right now, though. So the biggest question mark for me in this well, there are two big question marks, I suppose. One, can we get back home? And uh, that's, that's not a given because I've nerfed this engine. And uh, two, as far as the spark engine and all is concerned, is this going to be good enough to land on Val and take off again? Not sure about that either. So we're going to potentially have to do some tweaks. I might end up uh, doing a Jewel Polo Redux video if this doesn't work out this time. And, but uh, I, it's sometimes nice to just show, well, I almost always show my testing, so this is not unusual. Okay, well, yeah, we'll, we'll have two pilots, Moel, Kerman, Valentina, Dupont, and Moel. All right, so let's see what happens. All right, so here we go. SAS is on, throttle is up, and check staging, ignition, and launch. We have time warp to a dual transfer window, of course. And you'll note that the second stage is a little bit underfueled, and that's to ensure that our trajectory can be a little bit nicer than it was with the maximum capacity test. On that one, we did have the second stage fully fueled. I feel like I need to do some auto strutting, so let me just auto strut to heaviest part there, and that's locked on grandparent part for some reason. All right, we are past the sound barrier. Approaching max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Okay, this time a very good flight profile, obviously. Holding prograde most of the way here. And separation, and ignition. 5J2s are lit, so launch escape system, off it goes. Okay, making orbit here. And that's good enough, 86 by 83. Now, since this is a capabilities test, I'm not going to just neglect the fuel here because that wouldn't show the proper capabilities of this system. So we are going to use that fuel. Uh, we're not going to neglect it. And uh, same with the, the third stage. I'll try and use all of the fuel in an effort to properly ascertain what this can do. And let's be decisive about it. I said we would aim to land at Val, so... Um, normally, it's probably better just to capture it close to Jewel, but... I think... Um, that's probably more of a issue with Jupiter than with Jewel. I think Val, Val itself could possibly help us if we can see this closest approach, if I could just finagle that. But I think... It's tough to do it with... Oh, there we go. Hmm... Well, we've got Val Encounter, let's not sniff at it. Let's uh, go with that for now. You can see that the third stage is nine minutes, it says. It's crazy. Oh, I might as well sh uh, turn on this engine, too. No point wasting time. Okay, separation and ignition. But you can see, uh, with the Delta V we have in this stage, We'll have 2,200 meters per second left after finishing this burn. So that's a lot. Now one reason I'm doing this capabilities test, and I'm actually going to do it for a lot of other rockets from mods as well. 
And the goal, I, I need to get a sense of how to balance everything if for different scales. So I'm looking to create little configurations so that it's possible to have balanced stuff for uh, different scales if you're using Kerbin scale, you know, regular scale, 2.5x, 3.2x, 6.4x, and 10x. Um, have, have the parts be balanced for those situations and so that you have the right feel for the rockets and they have uh, you know reasonable capabilities so I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense of what numbers would be best for that and first with the stock parts and then with modded parts uh, looking at Tentaris, Contaris and uh, maybe Blue Dog and stuff like that uh, to uh, they probably they might be okay already uh, I don't know if they all come with uh, configurations for different scales though so so anyway, that's just something I'm curious about doing. I don't know if that'll be of interest. And of course, among those would be a uh, configuration for real scale, uh, real solar system scale. The goal is to not require a whole lot of other mods, like uh, this is not going to be realism overhaul, obviously. This is going to be just changing the engines to give the right feel, even though um, we don't have real fuels, though it's possible to just rename liquid fuel to liquid methane and li oxidizer to liquid oxygen or something like that would pretty much do the trick and mob propellant to hydrazine. Okay, well we're probably so far off that we don't need to chase that. Now it's possible to get like Leif to capture you or Tylo to capture you into dual orbit. And here Tylo is actually making an encounter even though I wanted Val. Um, you know what? Maybe I should just let Tylo do its thing. Now, of course, there are mods to fix this, but I'm trying it mostly stock so that I remember how stock is like kind of thing. I have all those additional tools in other series. Okay, well, we know it's somewhere around here. <laughs> uh, let's, let's leave that be and uh, time warp out of Kerbin SOI and do things. Oop, electric charge is an issue. Interesting thing, we do need to run our fuel cells. It's not like we have solar panels on here, so that's another complication, actually. Well, we have plenty of fuel for the fuel cell to run on. It is taking a lot of fuel, though, I have to say. Which is good, I guess. We probably shouldn't have carried all the ablator, but I actually haven't returned from Jewel in the stock system for a very long time. Okay, let's see what happened. Well, we didn't encounter Lath yet. Let's turn on that RCS system. I think we'll, uh, we'll just have to make a correction when we enter the dual system. Boomerang Launch Site has decided to, and Kerbal Space Center and Island Airfield have decided to float in between Duna and Drez for some reason. Hmm, curious icon displacement. Funny, we're pretty steady here, but the map is sort of wiggling quite a lot during this time warp, isn't it? You see, there's sort of a oscillation going on in the actual orbit lines. Not too sure what's up with that. It's a little bit dizzying, makes me feel a little bit seasick, which is weird because again, our vessel is not wiggling at all. Well, Tylo obliges, and it looks like we can hit it in such a way as to make orbit, but let's try and make sure it doesn't throw our inclination off into some wild direction. It looks like it's going out at the same inclination. Ah, okay. Um, okay, wait a second. That captures us into this orbit, which then has us encounter Tylo again. Again, after three years, which puts us into this orbit. That's a nice orbit, but I think this is a little bit overblown here. At least the inclination is nice. Ah, that's a better orbit. Look at that. Okay, so now we encounter Tylo. We get into this orbit, and that has a periapsis around Leith orbit, which I can deal with. Okay, so only 50 meters per second for this. Okay. 
Uh, that looks like the orbit that was advertised. And our periapsis is not crashing into Tylo. Also important. So the reason we don't want to land on Tylo is because it has a really high orbital velocity. And in fact, let's take a look at its stats to remind ourselves. It says 0.8 Gs, really high gravity. So obviously our little moon lander isn't going to be able to handle 0.8 Gs. Yeah, it's a tough one, Tylo. Passing really close to it, fuzzy textures, and on we go. Okay, out to Apoapsis. Well, no, follow my craft, please. Uh, we should plot this ahead of time. So I'm saying that we can get an encounter there. And there we are. It's not ideal, though. And, oh, look at that. It's bringing our orbit down. Hold on. I want to see what's going on here. It's actually helping us out. That's nice. But we can't get too much closer than that. I don't even know if that's safe. How much is it going to take to make orbit around it after we do that? Um, 1,330. Well, that's pretty much what we've got, isn't it? So, good. Good. It's not the ideal situation. The ideal situation is encountering Val at the periapsis over here. Uh, we're sort of askew. You see we're approaching like this. I'd rather approach it tangent to its orbit. But this isn't too bad. And it'll, uh, it'll allow us to get done with this stage finally. Finally get done with the third stage of the Saturn V so we can move on with our other stages. <laughs> Brings up a little bit of a problem though, since we're running the fuel cell, we actually have less delta V than that. Let's say I actually boost up. Oh, there's another encounter over here. Then I don't know if it'll be that much better, but let's see. Oh, this is complicated. Not only do we pass by Val, but it gets us into an orbit that also has a brief Leif encounter. Uh, that's alright, we're not going to go for that. Let's see if this helps us get into orbit though 900 maybe we can swing that I don't know how how much uh, our fuel cell is going to consume and correction crazy things will happen to your orbit in the dual system uh, why do I see a tyloperiapsis no I don't want that Okay, there's the Val encounter I was trying to get in the first place. Okay, we're not accidentally encountering Tylo. But how much is this going to cost us to get into orbit around it now? Okay, so we're on the correct side of Val. And plotting again. For orbit. Tells us we need about 1,100 to capture. So the problem is we really want to capture with this stage because we, we didn't have to, you know, take this and dock with the lander before using the service module engine to do anything. So, yeah, that's complicated. This is not the best approach to Val, but here we are. And retro. We do have enough fuel. So here we are, making orbit around Val, still with the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. I wouldn't mind crashing this into Val, but maybe we should leave it in orbit for future recovery or something. But we still have some fuel left over here. Maybe we should have it get us into a tighter orbit. Let's go around to Periapsis again to do that. Okay, that's all the fuel. Okay, good to use all the fuel. So far we've been doing that. Okay, and here, decouple, and SAS off, RCS on, set as target, control from here. We really don't need to do this, the, but actually we do because we haven't transferred to Kerbal yet. Wow, I just directly flipped around and it managed to throw me off. That's great. 
Oh, what? What? Wait, wait. There was magnetism. There was there was totally magnetism. What the heck? What was with this glancing blow thing? Hey, there was magnetism between the docking ports, and they went all okay, pear shaped. Okay, well we can't have it spinning around and around. I think it's time for Valentina to do some of her, well, what Valentina does. All the excitements and heroics and everything. Hmm. In retrospect, maybe adding a probe core to this would not have been a bad idea. Or transferring a Kerbal out before separation. Valentina's having a time of her life. Oh, wait. This is stock. <laughs> what am I thinking? This is stock, right? So if I just time warp, it stops spinning. Ah. See, uh, with persistent rotation and realism overhaul, that doesn't work. I have a lot of stock things to re remember. Okay. Grab board. All right, we have a Kerbal on board. Okay, there's our other thing, but I don't really need to dock with it right now. I think Valentina can just go to the surface. Yeah, I think uh, that's what I'm gonna do. We could have two Kerbals in here, but it doesn't make any difference as far as resources are concerned. Let's separate here. Okay, we're topped off. Let's review the situation of Val. Val has a 0.23 g gravity. And it says our thrust weight ratio will be 2.82, I think. Um, 20 kilonewtons, well, 4 tons. They'll be fine. As far as our total delta V is concerned, though, we only have 467. That can't be right. Uh, there might, must be some lack of cross-feeding is what's going on. Well, let me pick a good tank to make sure we feed into for cross-feeding purposes. Or maybe I can set some decoupler to make sure cross-feeding is happening. Um... Enable crossfeed. See, ah, there we go. Ha. <laughs> okay, phew. 2,107 is a lot, a lot different from, from uh, 400. Okay, so we have crossfeeding. We are ready to land. Okay, we are getting set for retro burn. Unfortunately, of course, this does not have uh, any reaction wheel. So as I told it to go retrograde, it is not doing so. So we're going to have to turn on, actually let's turn off SAS and turn on RCS so that, um, oh, Valentina's there. Why is my R, oh, RCS is disabled. RCS enabled. There we go. Okay. And careful not to hit our command module. And also we need to activate this engine. And retro. Overall landing should be about the same here as on the moon. It may be just a little bit more delta V. I mean it's got a little bit more gravity so just gotta be careful with that. I'm going to tune down the RCS thrusters but leave them on. I remember having issues when turning off the RCS thrusters, so we're not going to do the same thing here. It seems like the train gets pretty high though, right here. But perhaps we can sit down around here-ish. So above this, on this, uh, I can't really say it's a plateau, it's pretty darn bumpy. Well, I'm glad this has 2,000 meters per second. I think I might have to use all of it, actually. I would rather impact around here, if possible. I don't like the look of those slopes. I don't know if I can slow down in time to come down here, though. Well, okay. Looks like we might be right on the edge here. 
It shows uh, four degree slope, five degree slope. Well, this barely has enough thrust to weight ratio to manage this. Okay, we got a bounce there. Okay, we don't need all the RCS stuff. 927 meters per second. Considering that the our velocity was like 800 meters per second, that, that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough getting back to orbit. Okay, Valentina, EVA please. Oh, all this bounciness in this version of the game though. I don't know. Very dubious. Okay, uh, plant a flag. Uh, Saturn V test. Just testing the capabilities of our new rocket. Okay. Alright. We don't need to take surface sample or anything. Totally boots on the ground. The funny thing about all this is it doesn't give you some of the information that I'm used to in MechJeb, which is uh, closest approach distance and time to closest approach. It doesn't calculate that out. Okay, but anyway, it will have to do. I'm really trying to focus here on making sure we get to orbit with this. Otherwise, the command module can do the rest of the rendezvous. Okay, I'm going to wait to lap lapse this now, but boy, we only have 40 meters per second officially. Unofficially, we still have some mod propellant here. But it's not great to use that. We do have a tangency right now. But clearly, if we're going to do this mission properly, we're going to need to dump some mass on all this. Probably dump the structural panels first thing. Okay, well, here we go. Can we make orbit? Let's turn those on. I don't think so. At least not on our main fuel. And now I wish I could decouple that off, but... Okay, and... It's not thrust limit. Well, with the RCS we can. Okay, so we are in orbit. Let's just limit those again so that we don't use them more than necessary. And we are behind our target, so we'll stay in the lower orbit in order to catch up. Uh, though maybe we want to be a little bit further up so that we can time warp. The time warp limit is uh, 24,500. So now we're good. Okay, we are now approaching the target, and we should have a close approach distance of 2 kilometers. I'll still use the mod propellant here to continue the rendezvous. But, boy, were margins tight on this one. It wasn't a particularly appro bad approach to landing, either. So, yep, with the fuel we packed, this was a tough one. Okay. Well, with this in its current state, I'll just uh, have it hold steady here, and we will have the other side do the main docking. Right here, though, we only have 1,154 meters per second, so if we really want to get back home, it might be useful to pack more fuel next time. But let's do what we need to do right now, and worry about that as it comes. This at least has a reaction wheel. Another relevant question is, now that we've ditched the third stage of the Saturn V, our fuel cells are running off of the liquid fuel and oxidizer in here. This, I guess, consumes power and we need to hibernate and warp in the future. So hopefully that'll be alright on the way back now. Okay, approaching to dock. I don't want to uh, bump in an awkward way this time. So let's go slow here. Uh, it's bumped, but it connected. All right, RCS off. And let's do a crew transfer. Okay, Valentina's now in our command module. And let's ditch 
Uh, we might as well move the remaining mob propellants in here. Um, or not. We have to actually dig in here and access the service module tanks. It's not like it's... Yeah, it's only one unit. Can it actually... I doubt it can actually... Yeah, it can't be controlled. So that unit is lost, but it's only one unit. Okay. So, now's the problem. We need to break over around Val and go back home. First of all, about breaking orbit. Looks like we need about 300. That will put us into a tighter orbit around Jewel. Why don't we instead go for the opposite direction? And let's see, can we go to escape directly? We may need help from a moon or two. Well, that's escape. And that escape puts us in a higher orbit, not a lower orbit. But on the right side, 800, uh, 785 meters per second. So maybe this is not so troublesome as I thought. What we really need is for Val to be on the other side of Jewel. Right now it's on this side. I think, I don't know, maybe that's that's the key. Should we do the whole burn around Val or should we like wait? So let's say we get into a Val similar orbit and then we do another burn around Jewel. Like let's say uh, here-ish to exit. And that's a proper exit to a lower orbit that could be tangent to Kerbin's right there. And that would cost 1,441 from there. So it's pretty clear that if we're going to do this, we should do it all from around Val. But the timing is critical. And Val has to be over here. But the transfer window back, it's possible that the Val goes around Jewel so quickly that we would be able to find a condition where we can make it back. So first of all, let's get an alarm. Okay, we are at the transfer time for the return back to Kerbin. And if I try and break orbit in such a way as to boost my orbit up, so we're still around orbit around Val and I want to boost up, uh, we, we go out like that. We need to go the other way. And so, if Val is over on that side, would that help? So we see Val here now, and it's obviously in a good position to, if we wanted to boost up, we, we need it over here to go the other way. Let's see. Okay, so let's say around here. Now, will it help us to go back to Kerbin, or am I reading this completely incorrectly? So the first thing is still, we need to break orbit in such a way as to boost our orbit. And now importantly, is that in a direction that will take us back home? Well, it's looking a little bit more like it. It's touchy. I mean, this is 963, we've only got 1,152. Uh, that looks pretty close. Oh, oh, oh. Man. Wow, 1,056, 1,152. So we have a extra amount of about 90, 96. Let's take a look at what's happening around Kerbin. Obviously, we need it to dip into the atmosphere. Very important. Can't just be floating in the middle of nowhere. And I can't afford any huge mid-course adjustments. 384 though. That's pretty close. Okay, so it says about two minutes of burn time. We're 19 minutes ahead of the node. Let's try and make sure that we hit Kerbin properly at the node. Here we go, folks. Will it work? Will we be able to bring them back? Jewel, Lathe, here we are around Val. Thrall is down, activating engine. 
And remember, this is the nerfed version of the engine using mod propellant at 260 seconds of ISP. So if you got the regular version, you'd probably be all right, except it's a lot heavier. This version is lighter, so that's a plus. But think of it as making up for the fact that it has less thrust and less ISP. Okay, ignition. Oh, that uh, the fairing piece is on the service module. I was wondering about that. That's the only thing that we really want to have happen. Okay, we should have been right on the node as far as numbers are concerned. Okay. Well, did KSB tell us the truth about all this? About our attempt to get back home? Well, I don't see any approach to Kerbin right now. Uh, but... Okay. It looks like we overburned, doesn't it? Hold on. Set us target. No, no, there. Okay, um... Okay, there's an encounter. Okay, well, I'm not going to mess around with that. Let's see, 92 meters per second left. So, we'd better do this right. Yes, I do know about the scroll wheel allowing you to fine-tune these things. So, if you don't, uh, if, if you use a scroll wheel on these, uh, you can go in smaller increments. Forget that uh, there was a version where they introduced that for the first time. It wasn't always the case. But uh, there's no amount of fine-tuning that's going to get me the exact number I want. 20 kilometers is pretty good though. But we just need 0.5 meters per second as a mid-course adjustment in 156 days. Oh, well, that's the right orbit. It looks like that's going back, right? Yeah. Okay, and it's about halfway. All right. Well... Here we go, exiting Val's SOI. Something is still consuming electric charge. Our fuel cell should still be on. Okay, exiting Jules SOI. And yes, the liquid fuel oxidizer is still being consumed. But it doesn't look like it's a rate that we need to worry about. The service module was probably the one that was consuming it the most. Okay, on to the node. Well, this has been sort of unbelievable. It's been a long time since I conducted a dual mission, I'll tell you. Um, been playing a lot of realism overhaul with the real solar system. Plenty of Jupiter missions, but uh, those are nothing like your average dual mission. Now if you want to know how I did some of the fancier things as far as the maneuvers are concerned uh, I do suggest you watch the career mode series that I've been uh, putting up episodes in and eventually we'll get through all the things including all the fun you can have with Jewel. Alright, that's pretty close to the node, and we do not have to use RCS to turn, which is very important in this case, because 0.5 meters per second difference here. And let's get a good look at what's happening at... Oh, what a mess. Uh, can I can I see Kerbin, please? Kerbin is really close to where the encounter is. Focus view. can right-click on that to see it. And just stability assist, don't follow that node. 33 caps lock, that's another thing. Let's fine tune this. I think I want to go to 22 kilometers. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what altitude will get us a definite capture from the velocities that we'll be approaching the Kerbin system. We're coming in pretty fast. Um, maybe 20. It, it could be really bad at 20 for all I know. I don't know. And like I said, it's been a long time. But now RCS off so it doesn't change our situation. And let's go to Kerbin SOI. Okay, here we go. Kerbin SOI. Our periapsis has not changed. Coming in 4,700 now. Probably be 5,000 by the time we hit the atmosphere, I don't know. Oh, maybe not quite 5,000. 
Okay, getting ready for service module ejection. We are normal. And... Oh. Okay. Service module away. And... Surface retrograde. Uh, with respect to the surface, we're going 5,500 right now. So that climbed really quickly on me. We may be at like 6,000 by the time we hit the atmosphere. Okay, whoa. Uh-oh. Uh, well, a blader is a blading. Heat shield is a heating. Did I get the periapsis right? I have no idea. G-forces are forcing. I guess I don't have uh, G-force limits for the Kerbals in this save. This is a sandbox save. They would have passed out. I forget if you can deploy the parachutes with the Kerbals passed out. I sure hope so. I mean, of course, in this case, it didn't matter, but... Okay, we probably didn't have to come quite that deep into the atmosphere. Could have gone shallower. The ablator was fine. Boy, boy did we not need 800 ablator. Even with that approach, we didn't need 800 ablator. What do you need 800 ablator for, exactly? Crazy. Alright, now it's just a matter of the terrain that we set down on. There's, there's no end to the issues that might occur. So, first of all, let's get rid of the, basically, nose cap, um, which I don't need to follow right now, of, of course. I mean, why would you want to follow that? Okay. Parachutes. Full parachute deployment brings us to 8.4 meters per second. That's actually close to what Apollo set down at. Uh, so... Even though it's more than I'd normally like, I'd like it under 6. It's actually not unreasonable, and we are over water, so that's nominal too. So there you go, my Jewel Polo mission. Um, really, by the skin of our teeth, making it through there. Very close margins. Some iffiness, obviously. Much to work on, but... Uh, it can be done. It can be done. Launching a mission to land on Val and return safely to Kerbin with unusual splashdown. Yeah. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.